Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new motherboard from MSI. This is the MSI Big Bang Z77 M Power. I'm going to start off with a closer look at the retail box. This is a Z77 chipset motherboard, which means it has the Z77 Intel chipset, the 1155 socket, which will support Intel Core i3, i5, and i7 CPUs. That is 1155 second gen core and third gen core, which is Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge. And the Z77 chipset is more tailored towards Ivy Bridge processors. Sandy Bridge will still work, but you get some more stuff with Z70 er, with Ivy Bridge, such as PCI Express Gen 3 support. This is compatible with Windows 7, of course. Now they're also putting the Windows 8 compatibility logo on there, as some of the new motherboards have had. Also, you get two-way SLI and three-way Crossfire X support. Now the uh, OC certified part of this motherboard uh, refers to the mili military class burn-in test from MSI, saying that each M-Power mainboard has gone through strict tests to guarantee stable overclocking results. What does this mean? It means they're not testing each part of the motherboard at a component level. They're actually assembling, installing a CPU, uh, setting up the motherboard, booting into an operating system, uh, I presume Windows, and um, they are actually testing the board, running Prime 95 for 24 hours, which is much longer than most boards are tested for, and that's going to give you much more stability and a uh, much better guarantee that this board's actually going to function. I'm uh, imagining for MSI that's also going to mean much fewer uh, RMAs for boards that um, actually have a component that might not work out of the box, but uh, they're testing it with the 3770K CPU at 4.6 gigahertz, 24-hour Prime 95 burn-in tests, and uh, better power stability. So that's what you get. Um, actually tested motherboard. And if you don't believe me, look right here. Look, there's a sticker. Most motherboard boxes don't come with a sticker. They, you can just open them. This is a MTC Z77 M Power Test Media Testing Center at MSI. This board's been tested. Uh, some more specs that we have here on the inside flap. Uh, enhanced components, so military class three components, uh, such as their three-in-one package MOSFETs, uh, their special PCB design, solid capacitors, super ferrite chokes, high C caps, uh, enhanced input output power design for overclocking. So for overclocking with a K SKU CPU, so for instance a 2500K or 2600K in the Sandy Bridge line or a 3570 or 3770K CPU in the Ivy Bridge line, higher power efficiency, faster power transmission speed, programmable microprocessor inside optimized for extreme overclocking. You get an 8-pin power connector for the CPU. You also get a supplemental 6-pin PCI Express power connector for the VGA. So that's providing more, PC, uh, more power to the PCI Express lane. So especially if you're going to be running multiple cards and overclocking them, uh, that's great for stability and performance. Uh, enhanced thermals, so uh, Twin Frozer 4 based design. Um, similar, if you're familiar with Twin Frozer 4, that's the cooler they use for their video cards. So uh, low airflow optimized, they use a super pipe, which is listed over here. Um, actually, I'll come back to that. Uh, big clear CPU space, metal screws, uh, total fan control. They have four, all four pin PWM fan connectors on the board. Uh, multi BIOS, two BIOSes, uh, debug LED. Easy surface mounted power and reset switches. Uh, we're going to look at all this stuff once we get inside the box. Some more specs down here on the bottom. Uh, gaming device support, so you get a combo PS2 port. Uh, you get onboard Bluetooth as well as Wi Fi. Uh, you get USB 3.0, actually, eight total uh, USB 3.0 ports supported. HDMI, SLI Crossfire support, THX True Studio. I like this spec over here, the Super Pipe. It's the world's thickest 8, miter, eight, eight millimeter heat pipe. My mind is blown. Uh, next, we have SATA 6 gigabit per second, of course, the easy buttons that we've already pointed out, V checkpoints. You know, let's take this motherboard out of the box. Next up, we have accessories, and uh, in case you did not believe me about the testing that these boards go through, well, you also get a uh, chart right here. This was approved by Tong Tong on July 31st, 2012. You can see the uh, specs here for the testing equipment that was used, and uh, down here we even have benchmark results for 3D Mark 06, 3D Mark Vantage. Uh, game benchmark, I don't know which one that is, Cinebench, as well as SciSoft Sandra. So a very thorough uh, testing report right there. You get an MSI Intel Z77, Z75, H77 platform overclocking guide right here, which is fuller, full color, full dot guide uh, for overclocking within the BIOS. Uh, some good information in here. I kind of like this Ivy Bridge platform OC setting reference table that they have on the back. You'll notice that uh, they, they have some tuning items over here, such as CPU ratio, CPU V-Core voltage, 
then they have different options for it, like easy, normal, fun, danger, not recommended. Anyway, there's some information on overclocking, especially if you're a first timer, very nice to have that there to get you all set up and sorted and good to go. Uh, next up we have some more documentation here. You get an MSI drivers and utilities disks. There are generally updated versions of all those softwares and drivers available on the website, which is better to download. You get a quick installation guide here, which is, I believe, a yeah, this is more of a generic uh, installation CPU building guide. If you're not familiar with that, you can also check out our How to Build a Computer series here on Newegg TV. You get a certificate of quality and stability since this is an MSI Military Class 3 five-star product. You get a nice thick gold leaf uh, certificate right there. Here's your main motherboard manual. So uh, this will walk you through the installation. It's got a few different languages available, all of the accessories, uh, all of the included hardware on the board. I'm going to sort of walk you guys through these. Uh, look, they have a nice layout here of the PCI Express lanes. So you got you can do 16x by itself, you can do 8 and 8, you can do 844, which incidentally is the configuration that you would be using if you're going to be doing Crossfire X. Uh, here's software and application user-friendly guide for the software that's included. You also get some serial ATA cables. These are all SATA revision uh, 3, 6 gigabit per second capable up to. They're also backwards compatible, of course. Uh, they have L brackets on one end and straight plugs on the other end, and there's four of them total. You get a Wi-Fi antenna. It's a little two-piece one right here. Kind of like this. You get, you get a single uh, Wi-Fi connector on the back for the included Wi-Fi, so you can just attach that directly. Or if you need a bit better signal, you can attach this little extender guy right here. Then you get a little bit of cord, and then you can plug the antenna into that, and then you're all good to go. Also a little installation guide included with that. Uh, you have some voltage read points on the board, so they've given you, given you some leads for that, four of them in total. Uh, you also have an input-output shield, of course, here for the motherboard. It's black, but the uh, inputs and outputs are labeled, so you can tell what's what. And metal on the back. You also have a SLI bridge. Uh, this looks like it could reach down about four slots, so you can go with the different spacing on your video cards, depending on the uh, width of your video cards and how you want to plug them in. And finally, you get the uh, MSI M connectors right there, which you can use to plug in front panel connectors to, and then plug the block into the board to make that process a bit easier. Looking at the motherboard itself now, just starting off with the back so you guys can get a look at the PCB. It is matte black. Uh, it looks quite nice. Also, the uh, various thermal solutions on the board are mounted with Phillips head screws, as you can see, scattered around. So you can remove those without too much difficulty if you want to clean the board in the future or add a water block or that sort of thing. Now look at the front of the board, we can see MSI has gone with a primarily black color scheme with some yellow highlights scattered throughout, and then the heat sinks are uh, sort of a grayish color, uh, which has a little bit of texture to them, which I'm imagining is going to give them a little bit of a better surface area. Uh, and then I'm also going to point out the fan headers here before we go into detail. There's five of them total, they're all four pin headers as previously mentioned. So you got a CPU fan header right there at the top another system fan header right next to it, uh, another system fan header over here, that would pr probably be for a rear or top fan, uh, and then you get two more four pin uh, fan headers down here at the bottom, so that gives you a total of five. Now we're going to look at the board in detail, we're going to start off in the lower right corner down here, and uh, I'd like to first point out that this board has two BIOSes, or BIOSes, or however the plural of BIOS goes, you have a switch to switch between them right there, so one on the left, one on the right. If you happen to have a power outage or something like that and you corrupt a BIOS, you can switch over to the other one and back up and get yourself back up and running. You got three USB 2.0 headers right there for USB 2.0 ports. Moving to the left of that, you have some front panel headers. So uh, these are for those little M connectors right there. So JFP1 and JFP2. Bear in mind that the uh, layouts for those, for those uh, pinouts are right here, JFP2, JFP1, if you see those. So. Yeah, those are kind of a little bit offset from that. I also have a JLED3, uh, which I was kind of curious about. That's actually for an OC Genie, or a voice, I'm sorry, a vo voice Genie header. I'll leave it at that. I, I haven't heard, heard of voice Genie at this point, but voice commands to some extent. I also have a trusted platform module header, if you're into that sort of thing. There's the two system fan headers that I already mentioned. Finally, you have your front panel audio connector right there for your mic and headphone on the front of your case. Uh, next to that, you actually see your AL, Realtek ALC 898 audio chip. That's uh, 
the audio codec chip for the 7.1 channel audio that's uh, built into the board. And next we're going to talk about PCI Express. Now uh, I left this sticker on here just to point out that uh, due to bandwidth allocation, strongly recommended users you install a third gen Intel Core processor, that's the Ivy Bridge, uh, and that way you will get functionality out of the third PCI Express slot down there. If you go with a Sandy Bridge processor, you don't get to use that last PCI Express slots, um, but you do still get PCI Express Gen 2 support, of course, and all the other slots are usable. If you're going to go with an Ivy Bridge processor, you'll get PCI Express Gen 3 support. Uh, you can go with 16x in the top slot. You can go 16x 8x, um, 16x 8x right there. No, no, no. Sorry, correction. Uh, so you can go 16x in the top slot. You can go 8x 8x, or you can go 844. And uh, bear in mind, uh, you can do two-way. Uh, SLI or quad SLI configurations using the top two slots. You can also go uh, three-way Crossfire X configurations if you're going to be using all three of those slots right there. In between the longer 16X uh, PCI Express slots, we have some individual 1X PCI Express slots. So for those, for your add-on cards, um, which there's lots of different PCI Express add-on cards, you guys can check those out. Moving on to the right, we have the MSI heatsink. Uh, again, nice yellow highlight on that. Uh, that's covering up the Z77 chipset which controls a variety of things, including your serial ATA connections over here on the right side. You'll notice here they've given you a sticker that says connect your SSD to these top two ports. And that is because the top two ports, although they are all colored the same, top two they've used a slightly different connector on just to help uh, define those as being different. These are your SATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per second ports controlled by the Z77 chipset. Uh, you also have four SATA Revision 2 uh, 3 gig gigabit per second ports, um, also controlled by the Z77 chipset. So if you are getting a newer SSD, definitely use one of these two ports right here. Uh, of course, with the uh, con PCH controller in the Z77 chipset, you uh, get RAID support for RAID 0, RAID 1, as well as a few other RAID configurations. Uh, next to that, you have a USB 3.0 connector. That's 20 pin uh, for a front panel USB 3.0 uh, that, that a lot of computer cases now have. Uh, it's RAID angled, which I really like because those USB 3.0 connectors can be a bit bulky and stick out quite a bit, so that'll help you with your cable management. Uh, right above that, you have a debug LED, so that'll uh, show postcodes as you're running through post. If your board happens to hang at any point during post, you can reference the code right there. There's a list of them in the motherboard manual, and uh, you can sort of get a better idea of uh, what the issue might be to help get your system up and running. Above that is the aforementioned 6-pin PCI Express power connector. Again, that's going to provide extra power to the PCI Express lanes. It is not necessary in all configurations. It's primarily going to be used if you're going with a high-powered video card, uh, at least dual or three-way uh, video card configuration, especially if you're going to go with something really high-powered like uh, GTX 690s for quad SLI or something. In that effect, uh, you'll want to plug in that PCI Express power connector. Extra juice to the PCI Express lanes, uh, another great feature, uh, especially if you're going to be overclocking your video cards. Uh, right above that, you have your voltage read points, the V-check points, so you can use that with the included voltage leads to get a uh, more detailed uh, level of monitoring of your uh, your computer's voltages if you have a multimeter. Next to that, you have your 24-pin main power uh, connector for the motherboard. Uh, scattered around that, you can see some more of their uh, high-quality super ferrite chokes and solid caps. Next to it is the DDR3 slots. And uh, the cool thing about the DDR3 slots in this board is, well, it actually has a lot to do with the, the Ivy Bridge processors, which have really strong uh, IMCs or memory controllers that are controlling the data transfers between your DDR3 and the processor. And uh, Ivy Bridge in particular can give you overclock speeds of up to 3,000 plus, uh, you can even go beyond that. It's really going to vary a lot depending on your processor as well as the quality of memory modules that you choose. But uh, that said, you want to go with DDR3 memory, of course. Uh, this can support 8 gig DIMMs per slot, 4 slots total, so that gives you a total of 32 gigabytes of memory uh, that you can install in here if you go with those higher capacity DIMMs. You do want to uh, install it in, in sets of two to make use of the dual channel uh, configuration, which gives you additional memory bandwidth and performance. Check the manual, which will tell you the proper slots to install that into to make sure that everything is up and running properly. Uh, a few more connectors and buttons up here in the top right. You have the one button push OC Genie button right there. You also have a J Turbo one header next to that, and that is for a sold separately uh, front panel OC Genie uh, hardware that you can purchase and plug in right there to give yourself some more control over the board. Of course, the surface mounted power and reset buttons are super. Uh, 
handy to have on have uh, if you're going to be going with the outside of the box build in particular to uh, get your hardware all tested before you go ahead and install everything in your computer case. Uh, next up, of course, you have the uh, LG1155 socket. That's where your CPU is installed. They have the sort of nice chrome version of the socket, which looks pretty cool. Uh, here is a big fat heat pipe running between these three heat sinks scattered around the uh, socket. So it's primarily going to provide uh, heat dissipation for your VRMs, your voltage regulation modules, uh, chokes, caps, and uh, MOSFETs, uh, which are all right under here. Uh, and essentially the heat pipe is going to be able to transfer heat between all these heat sinks, depending on which one's getting warmest, of course, and uh, help to more effectively dissipate that heat. Of course, if you have your uh, CPU heat sink fan installed right there, that's going to be providing some additional airflow in this area, uh, and that will help to keep all of those modules cool, which uh, aids in overclocking, of course, as well as long-term system stability. Uh, finally, for the surface of the board, up here in the top left, you have an 8-pin supplemental CPU power connector. Definitely going to want to plug that in because it's required in, well, for pretty much all situations, especially with newer CPUs, especially if you're overclocking. Anyway, that's where that plugs in. Uh, finally, for your rear panel inputs and outputs on the back here, uh, you have a combo PS2 port right there for mouse to keyboard. So especially if you use, uh, for instance, a mechanical keyboard that connects via PS2 that can get, uh, enable stuff like N key rollover, which is not available in uh, a lot of USB, uh, USB connected keyboards. So that's a nice feature to have, especially if you're an old school gamer. Uh, right here, you know what, this reminds me of something. I'm going to backtrack for just a second. USB 2.0 ports right here, the rest are USB 3. This is a clear CMOS button right there, surface mounted, so you can easily clear your CMOS from the outside of the case. And I just realized I totally forgot a button, which is all, all the way over here. I'm just going to come back to it real quick. That button right there, that's a go-to BIOS button. Uh, especially if you have tried out any of the uh, newer BIOSes, uh, new UEFI BIOSes that have come out, a lot of them can go through post very, very quickly, and uh, it can often be difficult to even get your delete button pushed in time to enter the BIOS. Push that button right there, and the next time the board boots, it will automatically go to the BIOS. So one push of the button gets into the, into the BIOS, uh, especially I've had issues sometimes with keyboards recognizing when you're plugged into various ports on the back, and uh, that's a nice button to have to make sure you can get into the BIOS so you can actually make adjustments, especially if you're getting your system up and running for the first time. Anyway, back to the rear I.O. We have a USB 3.0 right here, 246 of those. So that gives you eight total, six available here, and two more from that uh, USB 3.0 header uh, that's up there by the front. Uh, you also have, of course, your uh, Bluetooth. You have your Wi-Fi connector right there. You have your gigabit LAN. Uh, you have your analog audio outs right here, as well as your microphone input, of course. You also have a Toslink optical audio out right there. Uh, you have HDMI and DisplayPort, and that's for the iGPU on your Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge processor. So even without a discrete video card installed here, you can connect your monitor to those, and uh, you can get video without the need for a discrete video card. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the MSI Big Bang Z77 M-Power featuring the Z77 chipset and the 1155 socket for Intel second or third generation core processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.